Sonic, the heart of your system. You maybe came across the new Aqua Accelerate lately on Nvidia's Facebook or YouTube channel. So that's a project I've been working on for about four or five weeks now. I just built the system. It's not ready for the moment, but at the moment when you see the video, it's already ready and you can already see the final rig and footage on Nvidia's Facebook and also YouTube channel. In this video, I will give you some more insights about what we are doing and how the system was exactly built because it would be too much information for the original Nvidia video. And so basically the new Aqua Accelerate is quite similar to the old one, but the old one was using 3M Novex 7100, which has a boiling point of 61 degrees Celsius. Therefore, component temperature can be quite high because all the surface temperatures always reach 61 degrees Celsius for boiling and then kind of stays at this level. So your GPU, VRMs, um, whatever, memories, everything will always have at least 61 degrees Celsius, typically something above it. And for this special version, we decided to go for 3M Novex 7000 and it has a boiling point of 34 degrees Celsius. It's still the same, so it's not like water, it's not like oil, not electrically conductive, very low boiling point and that's how this system can work. So because it has a very low boiling point of only 34 degrees Celsius, we have to think of a way to get it back to condense. So for the original version with uh, 3M Novex 7100, we could just use a water block and connect the water block with an element like this. So we have a passive heatsink that would be cooled from the back with a water block. And then let's say it would have a surface temperature of about 40 degrees Celsius. And then the gas, which would have something about 60 degrees Celsius, would then eventually condense and drop back down. But with Novex 7000, with 34 degrees Celsius, it's not so easy because you would always be kind of at room temperature levels already and you have to be at a lower temperature to get the gas to condense. That's why we made those condensing elements and they all also have Peltier elements between the CPU block and the heatsink. So this is a 300 watt or a 350 watt tech element so has a very high power consumption. It's quite, quite tough to cool those elements as well but it's also necessary because the rule of thumb for techs is that you always have to have double the power consumption than what you want to cool. So if the GPU has about 250 watt TDP or power consumption, then we would have to have at least 500 watt Peltier element. And this is the element that goes in the front. So we will have the tank here with the Titan RTX inside. It will have a level of yeah, about eight to nine centimeters of 3M Novec. And then we will have this element in front, which um, is used to condense the main part of the gas. And then we will have another component on the back here. So if we just rotate this, we have another condenser unit, which is a bit more complex. So it's a special part we made for this system. It's CNC milled copper with nickel plating. And you can see again, it has a EK water block on here and it has a Peltier element in between. So basically we're cooling the Peltier element with the water block, then trying to cool this down to maybe like 10 degrees Celsius uh, total temperature. And this will be mounted from the inside like this. We have, will have an O-ring which will seal this off. So when we have all the 3M Novak in the bottom, it's boiling, then we have all the gas. The gas can access through this hole and go inside this structure all the way up to the top. If everything works out as planned, most of the gas will condense inside this condenser and therefore uh, we will not have any pressure building up because this pipe here on top will have access to the outside. So it will not be a complete sealed off system. This will kind of be a, a element to have the same pressure inside as outside. So for the moment, we will now uh, build the acrylic tank using this special two component acrylic glue and then we will try to put the tank inside the system. So we already prepared the back side of the case with an additional 10 millimeter acrylic sheet. So on the left side we have some mounting frames for the two PSUs and on the right side we will mount the main board and here we have a slot for the riser cable which will go to the front to the tank where the Titan RTX will sit. On the top here we will mount some RGB strips inside this little frame and then we will put my logo on top which will be illuminated from the back side.
the Titan RTX is already sitting in the box, so we already disassembled the card, removed the cooler and everything. I also already prepared this small shield of acrylic, so this will be mounted in front of the card like this. And we will place some RGB strips in here, which will then illuminate the boiling 3M Novak from the side. Then we of course have to wire all the wires up to the top and then kind of seal it off. That's the same problem we have on here. So this is the riser cable, which will then connect the card to the main board. And you can see there's a quite big slot in here, which is necessary to put the wire or the PCI Express um, extender through. And we also have to seal this off. So we kind of have to um, put acrylic glue all over this to completely seal it off. This will be difficult, but we will do that later. In the meanwhile, I already prepared the tech controller. So this is a small test setup where we have the tech controller which we will use for the system. This is also the tech controller which we will offer later for sale. So for example, for the tech water cooler which I announced several months ago. So how it works is we have 12 volt source. So this is from a PCI Express connector. It goes into here and here we have the possibility to mount text so we can just connect over a PCI Express connector several techs. In this case, I just connected a small tech to it. We have a temperature probe, which goes to the cold side of the tech, which is seen here. I also put a small copper piece on top, so it's not fluctuating that much. It's a bit more stable for testing. And then we have USB connector from the tech to the laptop. So if we take a look at the laptop, this is the tech controller software. So we can see the temperature target is currently 20 degrees Celsius and the fat temp limit is 65 degrees Celsius. So this is for the MOSFET. The MOSFETs also have temperature sensors on there. This is um, not really a problem for now because the tech doesn't really pull that much current. If it's a much bigger tech, it might be necessary to mount a heatsink on the PCB. And here we can limit the temperature limit of the MOSFET so they don't get as hot. And you can see currently it's basically fluctuating between 90 degree and 20 degree Celsius. So it's just a two point controller switching on and off. And we can, for example, adjust this to 15 degrees Celsius, which is kind of the configuration which we will use later in the Aqua XLR. So if we just apply this, you can see tech is powering on and you can see the temperature is now dropping 18 degree, 17 degree and so on. And we have a lot more monitoring data down there, so MOSFET temperature, everything that's necessary for the tech control. And once it hits 15 degrees Celsius, it will power off again and then it will stay at that between 15 and 16 degrees Celsius. So that's the same controller which we will use for the two big techs. So we will essentially in the end use two of those tech controllers in the system. The system is ready or was ready. Unfortunately, we tried it and it worked, but meanwhile the riser cable broke. So the problem is that you can see the Titan RTX is still inside the system or is again inside the system. I replaced the GPU multiple times now because for some reason the GPU was not detected. So uh, when I started or powered it up the first time, it worked. But if I access the mainboard BIOS and went into the GPU post, then I could see that the GPU was only detected by times eight PCI Express, but it's times 16 and it also had an explanation mark, a red one, which I was not sure what it means. But if I went into Windows, I could not install the graphics card driver. So it seemed like there was a problem. I was not sure if the card was maybe that, but that's not the case because I removed the card, put it separately into another main board and tried it and everything was fine. So then I thought maybe it's the power supply. Then I, that's what you can see right now replaced the power supply with an external one just with some extension cables, plugged it into the cart, same problem still exists. So it's not the power delivery, which means the only thing that it can still be is the riser cable, which is kind of a problem because the riser cable is a 60 centimeter Fantex riser cable and it's sealed off inside the tank. So it's actually glued into the tank. So I have to remove the glue, which is really not that easy and also remove the whole tank from the system. I have to drain the water cooling loop so I can take out the system, have to remove all the cables so that will take, I don't know, one full day at least so I can replace the riser cable. But then it will work because I also tried this whole setup with a GT710 
which is this small GPU. And the bandwidth of this card is a lot smaller, so that's probably why this worked. So I could actually install the graphics card driver with the GT710, but I think that's mainly because the bandwidth is a lot smaller over this uh, VGA and putting back the Titan RTX it wouldn't work so must be something related with the riser cable and the bandwidth of PCI Express. So that's the current state for now. You can find the final video of NVIDIA's um, video in the description so you can see how Aqua XLR 2.0 is working. Let me know what you think about the video about the project if you have any kind of feedback about Novex 7000 and how we solved it with the uh, Peltier elements to make sure the condensation is working and yeah see you next time.